Hey everyone, uh, I'm really excited about today's episode of CS because I'm joined by my new friend Christine Herr. Um, I know your brother Jacob, who you'll all meet in another video, um, but Christine, thank you so much for being here to share your story and, and to share with us. Absolutely, I'm happy to be here. All right, so uh, my first question is just who are you and what do you do? Who am I? So I'm Christine Herr. I'm the executive director of Art Force Iowa, and I love that I get to do that every day. Uh, but at the end of the day, I'm just Christine Herr. So whoever I am at home, when I'm on the toilet, it's who I am. When I come to work <laughs> as executive director, they're the same people. Yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Um, and so there's, there's, uh, you're obviously a very authentic person as we just found out, um, but uh, there's, there's lots more um, to, to you and so I'm excited um, for us to, to dig down a little bit deeper and so um, for you ethnically, how do you identify? I would say I am Hmong, yeah. H-M-O-N-G. Yes. Um, I, I have the spelling up here so people can see and we're, we're educating people because I honestly don't think that I even knew about Hmong people until I met your brother Jacob um, and stuff and so so I'm also still learning um, and so I'm excited um, for, for people to hear um, from you uh, about Hmong people. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your upbringing as a Hmong person? Yeah, I mean it was very interesting because our parents came as refugees in the late 70s mm -hmm and our dad's journey brought him straight to Des Moines. Yeah. So for us, we grew up here in Des Moines, Iowa, on the east side. Um, I remember going to an elementary school that had a lot of other first generation yeah. Asian Americans with refugee parents. Mm -hmm. So for me, growing up, it was, okay, there are other kids who kind of look like me in school. We were going to a Hmong church, so then we had a community. Um, so I, I really enjoyed it, mm -hmm. and I don't think it was until middle school and high school when I started recognizing, oh, I'm different. Mm. I look different. Our house smells different. The food we eat looks different. And you know, growing up as a as a girl, I was going to the farms with my mom mm. to kill chickens, oh, okay. right, and to make homemade sausages from the pig that we just killed. And so for us. In my experience, it was really being American, but also knowing what it means to be a good wife. Because mm -hmm. that's a really important thing in the Hmong culture, that your daughter is ready to be a nya, mm -hmm. which is a daughter-in-law, mm -hmm. a good wife. Um, and so I grew up just doing a lot of those things that Jacob did not have to do, because mm -hmm. he was never going to be a nya. Yeah. So he didn't have to go to the farms and do the same things the same way. Mm -hmm. um, they taught him more to do the things like, hey, this is how you were to, to butcher a pig if you were to ever do it for your family. Yeah. But it left a lot of the cleaning and knowing what everything else was like for the girls. Interesting. But Interesting. Um, you, you kind of touched on this, but uh, for you, when was the first time that you uh, saw and identified as Asian? And you, you said that you started to feel different when you were in middle school, high school, but uh, can you speak more into that? Yeah. I think when you grow up in a community, where people look like you, you don't really think that it's unnatural or right. not normal. Right. But in middle school, we were going to Goodrill Middle School on the east side, and there were maybe six students of color throughout the entire middle school. So coming from an elementary school that was mostly kids of color, and then going into the middle school that was mostly white, that's when I started recognizing, oh, we are different because people are saying it. Yeah. Other students are like, hey, did you know you're like one of four Asian people in the entire school? And that's when I started recognizing, oh, people, people notice this stuff. Yeah. This matters mm -hmm. to people, right? Yeah. And that's when I started recognizing, oh, so I'm not normal. Mm -hmm. Um, and that happened more in middle school because then I went to East High School and that was very diverse as well. Yeah. But, you know, you're trying to find your way. Right, right, for sure. Um, so uh, for you, um, growing up and, and uh, in more recent years and times, um, how have you been able to connect to your heritage? I think more now than ever, I want to not necessarily cling mm -hmm. to my heritage, but I want to inform other people about my heritage, right? So in high school, 
I remember meeting a bunch of other first generation Americans who were Southeast Asians, mm -hmm. who were like, man, no one knows who we are. Mm -hmm. And we would cover the Vietnam War in a class period and never mention all of the people who helped fight that war to help aid Americans. Mm -hmm. And actually that's the reason why we're here. Mm -hmm. And so I remember it starting way back in high school mm -hmm. when I wanted people to know who Hmong people are. Yeah. But now, because of the work that I get to be a part of, it's even more, yes, this is urgent mm -hmm. that young people know where they come from, but also really urgent that those who might not know who we are can learn who we are so that we can start humanizing each other, yeah. right? Because there's just so much divide right now. It's yeah. so much us versus them, them versus us. And I think when we have that mentality, we forget to humanize and empathize. And we forget that, hey, we're all people who want to love, who want to laugh, mm -hmm. who want to experience goodness. Yeah. And that's why I believe when we can inform people of who we are, where we come from, and why we're here, then there's less divide because there is no us versus them. Right. There's only us, yep. right? So that's the work that I get to do now. And I just think it's so urgent that we do that because there is this huge polarized divide. Yeah. And when we are that polarized, we just forget to love each other. Absolutely. And that's what we need the most right now. Mm -hmm. So I know that's one of the reasons why it's been, become more urgent for me. Because yeah. I, I see this divide um, that is more now than it has ever been. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, are there aspects of uh, your heritage that you want to experience more fully? Yes and no. Uh -huh. We grew up in a Christian household, mm -hmm. and so I would love to experience more of the traditional beliefs that the Hmong people do have, yeah. which is shamanism. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to convert, mm -hmm. right? Because I, I truly know and love who my God is and what my God has done for me. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting to see how so much of those beliefs tie into our culture. Yeah. Um, and because we were removed from that, mm -hmm. that's something that I would like to experience yeah. and explore a little bit more. Uh, whether it's a knot tying ceremony to mm -hmm. celebrate the birth of a new child or a mm -hmm. wedding. We just didn't get to experience a lot of that growing up. Yeah, yeah, interesting. No, I really appreciate you sharing that. Um, because uh, yeah, I haven't really thought about it from that kind of perspective or, or those kinds of experiences. So that's awesome. Uh, so are there any customs or traditions or experiences um, that you think of that bring you the most joy? Hmm. I don't know, honestly, yeah. beyond the clothing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it brings me the most joy either. They're just really pretty. Yeah. Right, but I don't wear them uh -huh. very often because you usually have to wear them when there's like a New Year's celebration. Yeah. Um, and we don't typically attend Hmong yeah. New Year celebrations because there hasn't been one in Iowa in six years. Yeah. So um, that makes it a little bit more difficult, mm -hmm. but I think it would be all of the cultural, like clothing, the jewelry, because all of that is made by hand. Yeah. Um, and now, I mean, they're made by machines because you can make it a lot faster and more efficiently. But I think it would be just the, the clothing and the colors and the vibrancy of what sets bone clothing apart from yeah. from other cultures. Oh, that's awesome. I'll, I'll have to check it out because I I don't have a, a clear picture in my mind of it. I'll, I'll find some and, and put them in the video yeah. um, uh, so other people are seeing and stuff. But, yeah. uh, but I love clothing and stuff. It's amazing. Um, and so I'll, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, is there uh, something that you wish non-Asians knew about Asians? I wish they just knew that Asians are a monolith, mm. right? We're not all the same. Right. And even if we all come from the same ethnic group, we're not the same. Right. So I think that's the biggest thing is that we're all different mm -hmm. and we all, just like you, have different hopes and dreams mm -hmm. and they're not the same. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest thing. Because I think people tend to think, when they think of Asian American, they think, oh, they're all the same. Mm -hmm. They all believe the same thing. They all want the same thing. Yeah. They all dream of the same thing. Mm -hmm. They have the same parents. Yeah. And it's like, some of it is similar, mm -hmm. but we're not all the same, yeah. right? And Asian Americans, that term was created 
speak to unify Asian people. And I just want people to understand that like it was created to, it was created by Asian people to unify Asian people for political power. So we can hold true to that name and be proud of it, but also understand that like, we're all very different yeah. with different needs mm -hmm. and wanting to fix those barriers that are different for each community within yeah. the Asian community. Uh, so that'd be the, my biggest one. Yeah. We were talking um, before starting this video and I was sharing with you a little bit about my upbringing. And so I'm later on in the game as far as like um, uh, discovering my Asian identity and stuff. But that's one of the most fascinating things for me to, to really ponder and, and recognize is that like, I think when we look at different people groups, whether black or Hispanic and stuff, there's a lot of diversity under there as well. Um, but under like a term Asian or Asian American, there's so much diversity and so much um, uh, wrapped up in that and stuff. And so that's been really fascinating for me to kind of take a step back and really look at things and, and analyze things. Um, so I really appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, I mean, it's just so different because, you know, you have the East Asia, and then you have Southeast Asia, and then you have South Asia, parts of Russia is in Asia. So you have like these mixed European with Asian cultures, right? Yeah. And then when you think of the greater scheme of, wow, Indochina was Southeast Asia and was colonized by the French and the British, right? All of that is so different than other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And so knowing our history and how different parts of Asia was colonized, it actually informs why that culture is the way that they are or why they have the certain foods that they have. Cause like Vietnamese, for example, with the banh mi, mm -hmm. that's a French and Asian like fusion. Mm -hmm. Right? And people don't know that yet yeah. because they don't know their history, <laughs> right? And so I'm even thinking about Hmong people, we don't have our own country. Mm -hmm. And there are so many other Asians who don't have their own countries, right? And so that just means, wow, there's even more people with richer histories yeah. that don't have a placement. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't know who they are, yeah. right? I'm thinking of the youth that I serve, the Karen and the Kareni, even though they all live in Myanmar, they don't have their own countries too. Yeah. Um, so because of that, I think people just forget that it's not just the countries that you see right. on the map. Right. It's not just East Asia as the Asians. Yeah. There's a lot of us who don't come from that region too, who haven't been in America as long. So then our own kickstart of being an American looks different because yeah. we have generations of East Asians here, but I'm only the first generation to be born in America, yeah. right? So in my family alone, we have two generations mm -hmm. that have been born here. And that looks different. Yeah. The experience is different. Yeah. And people forget that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, my last question is, um, what would you want uh, Asian people to know? I just want Asian people to know that we don't have to do anything to be beautiful. Mm -hmm. We don't have to do anything to be accepted. We don't have to do anything else to be powerful and that we can really just love ourselves for who we are because our ancestors did not kick all of that ass <laughs> for us to have that self-hate, yeah. right? For us to feel like we're unworthy, mm -hmm. right? And I also think as a person of faith, like God does not want us to believe mm -hmm. that we are not good enough, that we are not worthy right. because he's like, yo, I made you. <laughs> And I want you to love yourself because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Amen. So for me, it would be, I just want Asian people to know you're not too Asian, you're not too white. They're, those words mm -hmm. don't have them in your vocabulary, yeah. right? Because I think sometimes Asian people are, are worried that they're being too Asian mm -hmm. and then they're also worried they're being too white and that's why we have terms like a banana, mm -hmm. right? Yellow on the outside, white on the inside. Yeah. And it's like, we have to just stop that, yeah. you know, and, and remind ourselves that we are enough the way we are. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have blonde hair, go have blonde hair, but don't do it because you want to look white, right? Right. Do it because you're like, damn, I want to rock that, <laughs> Yeah. you know? And if, and if you want to have tattoos, do it because you want to do it. Mm -hmm. If you want to look a certain way, do it because you want to do it. Not because someone else is telling you that you have monolids and you got to get that, you got to get that. I, the eyelid game going. 
do it because you want to you want to do that not because society is telling you that your asian features or your asianness is too much yeah. um i just have a lot of strong feelings about that because I, I just think we're told so much that asian people need to keep their head down asian people like don't worry about it but oh you're too asian and the stereotypes that we have um with asian men and asian women are just a lot mm. and i just want us to be able to embrace ourselves cuz we are perfect the way we are and we don't need to change any of that um because again our ancestors fought too hard mm -hmm. and god made us the way we're supposed to be yeah so that would be it that we're all enough yeah we're worthy amen that's beautiful thank you so much for uh having this conversation and sharing what you shared. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to continuing to get to know you Me in too. the future. All right. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we will see you in the next one.